Hey team, welcome to week seven. Can you believe it? Week seven, that means that we have less time to train before the race than we had, at least in the 12 week program where we're halfway. We did some training up to that, so we're definitely on the downhill. Uh, week seven is one of the tougher weeks of the schedule, uh, but the good news is next week, Monday through Friday, is a lot of active recovery workouts. So if you can push yourself through the key workout this weekend, then you can take advantage of those active recovery workouts. And then we have uh, two two more hard weeks and then we're basically into the taper. So uh, the race is getting closer and closer. Week seven, if you've looked at the schedule, you'll notice week seven is basically a repeat of the workout from two weeks ago where you did a run, bike, run workout. And you're either going to be upping your distance uh, or you're gonna be doing possibly the same distance you did last time. And if you're upping your distance, uh, it's naturally going to be harder. So you may notice that your average paces or speeds uh, go down a little bit just because the distance is greater. And that's OK. It's you know, we just want to make things a little bit more challenging each, you know, each period, each week, uh, except for the rest weeks, of course. Uh, but that the rest is what allows you to go a little bit harder in the following week. So rest is important. Um, so back to that, if you're. Uh, because this is a repeat, this is a great way for you to compare to how the workout went a couple weeks ago. And if you're stepping up your distance, then you can even just, if you feel about the same, but you're covering more distance, and that's a great sign of improved fitness. You may even see that you go a little bit faster on the bike and the run, the two different runs, um, you know, just as your fitness improves. So the, let's go over the distances. Uh, first one is a four mile run, 25 mile bike ride, two mile run, essentially covering the bike and run distance of the race. The second option is five mile bike ride, or sorry, I always mess that up. Five mile run, 35 mile bike ride, and then a three mile run follow that. Okay, so longer than the race distance for Lava Man, uh, so much more challenging. Um, if you did the 535.3 last time, then this is an excellent opportunity for you to compare to your stats, your data, your results from the workout two weeks ago. Um, so a couple notes. Uh, the secondary key workouts, um, you're probably sick of me saying it, but it's kind of the same as the last couple weeks. Um, the workouts maybe get a little bit harder or you can push yourself a little bit more. Uh, but again, it comes down to listening to your body. And if on any of these, uh, you feel like you're not ready or you're for a high intensity workout, you can substitute an aerobic workout or active recovery workout as you need to. And you can switch those around uh, between Monday, Monday through Friday, really. Um, you just want to make sure you have a pretty easy day on Friday leading into the key workout if you do it on Saturday. Um, so what else? Oh, another great thing about this workout, the key workout, being a, a repeat of two weeks ago is it gives you a chance to practice your fueling. And in your fueling, uh, that's new, that's your nutrition, you know, the calories you take in as well as your hydration. But it also it's an opportunity to practice your pre-race meal. Um, and you can even take it as far as to practice your the dinner the night before. So a lot of the man, it's a buffet, it's mostly salad, um, some grilled chicken, uh, some pasta. And so if you think about those options, um, those are basically the options at the, at the um, what do they call it, the celebration dinner. Um, so you could even practice eating, you know, the timing of when you eat and when you get up in the morning, uh, just to make sure everything digests well before the race. And then uh, follow that same thing through at breakfast. I mean, you know, the race is going to start around 7 a.m. And so if it's, if it's warm enough or you're doing a workout inside and you can begin that work out at 7 a.m. and you can think about getting up at 4 30. I know that seems kind of crazy when it's you know it's your weekend but it is an opportunity to practice that so I'll leave you with that uh, but definitely during the workout make sure you're practicing your hydration and your nutrition. Uh, general rule of thumb you know, probably should be you should be con uh, ingesting somewhere between 175 to maybe as high as 250 calories per hour a lot of that is going to depend on your body weight and also depend on the how fast you're going, the intensity of the workout. Uh, but a safe number is 200 calories per hour. And then uh, in general, you want to get in one bottle of hydration per hour, one 16 ounce sports bottle. In Hawaii, uh, you may need more than that. And so my bike ride uh, for the race, I plan on it being, you know, an hour and 10 minutes, somewhere in there. And I, I probably will go through two sports bottles um, just because of the extra humidity 
And I know that from experience from when I've done the race before. So I take in a lot more uh, hydration than I would on a normal bike ride. And I also, you know, if you train in a hot, humid environment, you may be more used to it, more adapted. If you train in an environment that's not hot and humid, you may need more um, uh, hydration than you're used to. So some things to consider, but also ways and opportunities for you to practice in these harder workouts. As always, if you have any questions, uh, hit me up. Thanks.